In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, there are some new faces here, so just in case uh, we have to recall all of our new guidelines. Uh, for Holy Communion, uh, we stay about six feet apart as usual. Uh, the X's on the carpet uh, will be a good guide for you. And then there are three communion stations, uh, one on your right, one in the center, and one on your left. And uh, if just keep those filled, and I will walk back and forth from side to side so that you may receive Holy Communion. There is no exchange of the sign of peace, and there is no distribution of the precious blood. And um, you should catch on, because I think most everybody's been hearing these things over and over and over again. At this time, my dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O 
O oh God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject what is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed to us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables. Because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear but not understand. You shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted 
and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Amen. I say to you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see but did not see it, and to hear what you hear but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. So here in our Gospel of Matthew, uh, from chapter 13, it's verses uh, 1 through 23, Jesus is talking about how to be happy, how to be blessed, how to have a abundance, have, how to have an abundance of the spiritual life. Of course, he's not talking about farming, but this is the point of a parable. Most of the people he's addressing are very, very familiar with farming. And so then he teaches in parables. A parable uh, is a simple story. It's a simple story taken from daily life that illustrates a religious or ethical truth. So he's taking this farming from everyday life and he's using it to help communicate to the large crowds about how to be happy, how to produce a spiritual crop, if you will, for your lives. And so our lives, they are essentially spiritual. Now, of course, we have the physical, earthly part and all the material world that we live in and all the physical senses, but our lives are essentially spiritual. The healthier our spiritual life, the happier we are, and God blesses us, granting us his peace. Right? That's a simple fact of how we've been created. So the disciples, they would expect that since it's so important how to be happy, they understand that much, they would think that, you know, well, don't you want to communicate more clearly to the people? So they ask him, why do you speak to them in parables? And so he gives this answer, because knowledge and understanding of the secrets and mysteries of God, or the kingdom, as he says, is a privilege of, not everybody, but a privilege of those who believe. And so, but believe what? Well, first of all, that Jesus is the Messiah, this is the sticking point. It's also the gateway. It's the gateway to a happy life. We have to start there with Jesus as who he is. And so then this acceptance of Jesus as the Messiah, as the gateway to receiving more and growing rich in terms of spiritual health or spiritual benefit, it's also the, the rejection of that first uh, premise that Jesus the Messiah is also what causes us to lose what little we have. So we're talking about taking care of what we have. And, uh, you know, everyone has heard the word, most people, I think, everywhere has heard the word Jesus. They've heard of the word Jesus. They've heard of this name Jesus. Maybe not every single place in the world, but most everywhere in the world, they've heard of the name Jesus. So the question is, what do you do with that word? Do you investigate that? or just ignore it? Do you take care of what you have so it grows, so it gets, becomes more? That's what is meant by those who have will gain more, but if you're not taking care of what little you have, then you're gonna lose it. As I, from a seminarian perspective or from a priest perspective, I always said, you know, in seminary, if the seminarian can't keep his room clean and make his bed every day, probably should not be entrusted with a parish. Okay, if you can't do that little bit, 
You can't make your bed in the morning. If if it's that much of a struggle for you, maybe you should not be entrusted with a greater responsibility. Elsewhere, Scripture says it in that way. Those who have given given a little will will be entrusted with more. And so then we have this 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 understanding of those who have will be given more and grow rich. Those who have a little, even that's going to be taken away. And we'll get to how that, how people respond to the word of God. Um, so the people, they're healed through this belief in Jesus. That's why healing is mentioned in this Isaiah, for, this prophecy from Isaiah, which Jesus quotes. And people are um, healed in Jesus, that is, if they can truly give a full surrender of their lives to him. So this healing, health, happiness, all this goes together for a happy life, and it's based on the reception of the Word of God. That's the whole point, is we're hearing the Word of God. It's proclaimed every weekend. This is the major problem, is that we don't know the Scriptures enough because we're not producing the 30 or 60 or 100 times our effort in spiritual life, in spiritual benefit. So he's telling us, Jesus is telling us how to receive unimaginably 30 times or 60 times or 100 times more of the spiritual life, 100 times more of the happy life in comparison to the efforts that we're putting in. So we are much like the time of the farming. They would produce four to five times yield. You have a sower, that's the farmer, and he'd sow seed. So you have to plant the seed. And Sometimes you only have so much seed, so you got to be careful so they go sparingly. So those who sow sparingly reap sparingly, you know, or you'd go sparse, all right? Now, you don't have the, the, the wonderful pieces of machinery that we have, the planters. It's called a planter, big tractor-like thing. And these things can exactly pinpoint where to plant a seed as you go down the field in several rows at a time, the depth of the seed and the distance of the seed as they, as they go apart. And so it's a beautiful piece of machinery. I used to be an engineer, of course, remember? All right, so, uh, so, it's, so they don't plant that way at the time. They would just throw it or they try to get it in their rows, but they hoped that it would fall somewhere in rich soils. But when they did this, they'd only get four or five times what they would plant. And so then... Uh, Jesus, he's using that simple analogy to say, but you can, be, you can do this with the spiritual life. If you steep yourselves in the word of God, if you steep yourselves in scripture, like a tea bag, all right? Think of yourselves as a tea bag, scripture, scripture. Dip yourself in scripture every day, several times a day. We have to steep ourselves in this word of God so that it can produce this 30 times, 60 times, 100 times more spiritual benefit that Jesus wants to give us, that God wants to give us. But it is dependent upon our reception of the word of God. So for those who do not believe, even what, those who do not believe in the first, that gateway, that Jesus is Messiah, even what little they have will be taken away. They stay sick or ill because of their closed hearts and the rejection of Jesus, a direct result of their disbelief. And since they've rejected Jesus, they are in darkness, not able to see or understand. And that's what is meant by that prophecy. That's why he speaks to them in parables. Not everybody is able to receive the word of God. Because why? Because it's difficult to be a Christian. God makes it easy by his grace but it's difficult to follow Christ. Remember the cost of discipleship a few weeks ago. I think it was a few weeks ago. Did we talk about that? Maybe it wasn't during the week. But cost of discipleship, it's not easy to follow Jesus, but he gives us the grace. So then Jesus goes on and he explains this parable to his disciples who are able to understand, hear, and listen, and be healed. And the seed scattered out upon you, of course, is the gospel, the words of the gospel. And they're always being proclaimed throughout the world. And the question is, what do we do with those words? How do we respond to what we hear? Each person will produce a different spiritual crop yield or happiness of life in proportion to the kind of response their minds and hearts give to the words they hear so that the words of the gospel grow in them. This is what the soil is, our hearts and our minds. The seed is constantly falling on our hearts and minds, the words of the gospel. Even a word of the gospel, like Jesus or the Beatitudes or spiritual. Let me pick a word. What does it lead us to? So there's four different types of responses or four different types of soil, four different types of how our hearts and minds respond. This first one is the seed sown on the path. 
what's going on there. It describes a person who hears the word of the gospel without understanding it. And the evil one steals away what was in his or her heart. The words of the gospel are heard, but they're not understood, and so there's no yield. So to understand the gospel message is to grasp the truth and make it one's own. Some effort is required, in other words. So perhaps this refers to the spiritually or intellectually lazy regarding the words of the gospel. Again, if we do nothing with the scriptures, if we do nothing with it, then it gets taken away. The second one is the seed sown on rocky ground. It means that the words of the gospel are received with joy, but they lack strong roots. So when a trial or persecution comes because of the gospel truth or the gospel message, he or she simply gives up. So unless truth takes deep root in the human heart, it will be recanted as soon as it meets any opposition, and so then thin soil produces superficial commitment. The Word of God requires a commitment from us. Not only do we have to know the truth from it, but then we have to commit to it. Okay, then it gets to the third type, which is the seed sown among thorns. It describes the person who hears the words of the gospel, and they understood them, but there's this lure of riches and the worldly anxieties that choke the words of the gospel, and they bear no fruit. Anyone who's ever farmed knows that you have to have a clean field, in a sense, It can't be weedy. Next weekend, we talk about the parable of the weeds and the wheat. Otherwise, your wheat will grow up with the weeds, and the weeds could potentially choke, depending on what you have in your field, could choke off the growth. All right? So again, the people who he's talking to, they're very familiar with all these these aspects of farming and and planting. And so then, to be caught up in the worries of daily living, to be caught up by fear, And to fall prey to this seductive appeal of financial well-being, it's to guarantee a spiritual crop failure. That's like people who, you know, are living as Christian Catholics. They know the words of the gospel. They've heard them. They've responded to them. But there's still something that chokes off the fruit. That's like that four or five times yield. We could be doing so much better than producing four or five times. That's about where we are. Most people are at four or five times yield of spiritual life or happiness. And again, Jesus' point is that we don't have to put that much effort into it to produce 30 times or 60 times or 100 times. That gets us, gets us to the seed sown on rich soil. It's the one who hears the words of the gospel and understands them and bears that fruit. 30 times, 100 times, 60 times our effort. The good soil absorbs the full message of the kingdom of God. The person understands all the implications. They absorb the message of the kingdom of God from the scriptures with all of its theological and ethical implications. Again, they understand the cost of discipleship, but they also understand its reward. So if our minds and hearts accept Jesus and all he has taught and handed on through his Catholic church of today, we will be blessed and happy and at peace and enjoy this full an unimaginable happy life, 30 times, 60 times, or even 100 times the effort we put into it. 100 times more. So that, I don't know what to use for our today, our today, today's analogy. Not everybody's a farmer. But when Jesus told this parable to the people, they understood and they were enthralled. What do you mean a hundred times the yield? They were so amazed at that, at that thought that they could produce that much more food. You know, that we could have that much more happiness than our efforts put into that. And it all depends on our response to this word of God. If we allow our spiritual faculties to grow dull due to the neglect of the words of the gospel, then we're going to be uh, that people gross in heart from Isaiah's prophecy. We will be sick and ill and miserable with our hearts and minds dry and infertile since our hearts would already be full of worldly things and they would have no more room left for those seeds of the gospel to grow. And so our happiness is our spiritual life. Our spiritual life is our happiness. And it depends upon our minds and our hearts' response to the Scriptures. 
But if we're not reading them, if we're not looking at them every day, then we're in trouble. We're not going to be the rich soil. And we're only going to have maybe a four or five times spiritual yield. So we have to read those scriptures. We have to let the seeds of the gospel be sown in abundance upon us, allowing them to grow in us. And then we shall come to know that we have a loving and provident God who looks after us and protects us from harm. There's a lot of craziness going on. There's a lot of arguments and division going on in our world today. All right? And it seems everybody's going to end up on either one side or the other. It used to be where you could kind of stay neutral for a while. And the only way to really stay neutral is to rise above the arguments. You have to bring it back to God. You have to bring it back to who we are and what we are about. When I talk about masks, no mask, face covering, six feet apart, all this other stuff, doctors arguing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, well, whatever, okay? You'll, you'll be doing this forever. Okay, I, I, mean, I don't know if the mask wearing, I mean, I, I don't know about that forever, but we'll see. We don't know, okay? But the point is, where's our peace coming from? How am I going to be at peace with everything going on in the world around me? You can't escape the world, although people will try. That's what drugs and uh, recreational sex and all these other gambling, all these risk-taking behaviors are for. Try people, people try to escape and numb themselves from what's going on in the world. All right, but where's our peace coming from? It comes from Jesus Christ, the words of those Gospels. Those Gospels are Jesus' words, the Son of God. The more I steep myself in those words, the more I'm going to have an inner peace. It's Jesus' peace. It's his own peace. It's the peace of God that dwells within me, abides in me, and you're not going to care about what's going on in the world because immediately you'll be living from that word of God. That gospel, these gospels, that Bible, lots more to understand than we realize. And it is a practical help for achieving peace in our world. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our heavenly Father and divine protector, hears and answers all of our prayers, all of his children's needs, and so we make those prayers and needs known to him. For the church, that we may spread the hopeful and exciting message of the gospel through both our words and deeds, so that others may encounter the God who loves them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all public authorities, that God may guide them to make the right decisions for the well-being of the people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the salvation of the world, that we may, op may offer others the joy of coming to know God's love through sharing the story of our journey with God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and suffering, especially those on our parish prayer list, that they may find comfort in the Lord, who always sustains us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parishioners and territorial souls of St. Christopher, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they be given a place of rest and peace in God's eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear all these prayers we make known to you, those we speak out to you, and those we speak directly to you from the silence of our hearts, and answer them all according to your loving will, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood 
of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Christopher, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
If there is anybody present taking communion to the homebound, I ask you please approach the altar at this time. My dear sisters, this assembly dismisses you to bring the Eucharist from the celebration to our fair, parish family members who are unable to be here with us, share with them the scriptures, and assure that we are praying for them. Ask them to pray for the concerns of this parish family as well. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 